Mm, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you know, one thing that this makes me think of is we tend to have archetypes of friends. Like if you look statistically at who we call our friends, we tend to have an archetype or a certain type of friend. And so I have a few friends in my life who are really, really, um, uh, they're really divergent thinkers, they're really creative, they really push the envelope in terms of their belief system and they push the envelope in terms of seeking to persuade others and be really, really um, sort of um, um, assertive in expressing their beliefs. And so I really, really like the people in my life who do those kinds of things. And then I have people in my life who um, push me and, you know, give me hard feedback. And I really, really appreciate that. And then I also have people in my life who are kind of safe haven friends, right? Who are just going to accept me no matter what. And we all need all these kinds of friends, right? And family. And so, um, so I invest in some really, really close friends who I trust and have deep relationships with. I also like to stay in touch with friends that I don't see as much, but oh my gosh, we can pick up a conversation at any point. Mm. And I like to invest time with people that I, um, you know, have different opinions from, like we were talking about before. And then I just invest a ton of time with family and, you know, people that I consider to be my most intimate connections. Um, and, you know, like my husband and our children and, you know, people who are really, really close. I think that's really important as well. Yeah, you? balancing the time is important. I think it's prioritization. Hmm. I read a really, really interesting story about a gentleman who was um, he was dying. And I think he had like nine months to live or something. And it was very sure that his life was going to be over soon. He was doing everything he could to stay healthy and overcome it. But it was very clear that he was, um, was going to be passing away. And so he drew concentric circles. And, in, and he decided that he wanted to spend time with people who were farthest out in his network. He wanted to do that right away when he had more time. And then as he got less time to live, he decided that he would spend his time with people who were closer in, in terms of his circles, right? Mm -hmm. Because in his, in his final months and days, he wanted to make sure that he was spending the most time with people that were most important to him. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a really interesting way to think about um, how we spend our time. Like, like I've got people in that further out ring, right? The tertiary ring of relationships. And I might see them, I don't know, once a quarter or once a month, something like that. Um, and then I have people who are in that secondary circle who are really good friends and I stay in touch with them in multiple ways, but maybe a little bit more frequently. And the people who are closest, really, really close friends and family are the people that I want to see most mm -hmm. in terms of how I make time. So I just think that that's a really interesting way to think about it is sort of primary, secondary and tertiary relationships. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that I think about that in a systematic way. I'm definitely not, you know, planning out my calendar based on that. But conceptually, I think that's kind of how it works in terms of how we're intentional about spending time where we want to spend time, but also not in a way that completely will overwhelm us.